Are you looking for a free content management platform that you can use on your website to implement content mode? Well, in this video, I'm gonna explain how you do all this with PBIC Pro. Let's dive in. Hey, and welcome to the channel. My name is Leon. This channel exists to help you grow your website using your web stats. I wanna thank everyone that has been liking my videos and has subscribed to the channel recently because that really helps me out a ton to get these videos out to as many people as I can. As a way to say thank you, I've created a short cheat sheet on how you can grow your website traffic. So whether you have a new domain or you have an existing domain, if you want to grow your website traffic, just head over to the video description. There's a link over there where you can download that cheat sheet for free. Also, if you wanna watch more videos, just head over to my profile because I've created a ton of videos over the past year on how you can grow your website using your web stats. And sometimes updates occur after I've published a video. It's not always possible to go ahead and re-record everything, but I will try to keep a list of updates or maybe things that I've missed in the video description. So go ahead and check that while watching this video. All right, let's talk about PIVIC Pro because PIVIC Pro is a well-known name in web analytics. It's a well-known alternative to Google Analytics or Matomo or programs like that. But not many people know that PIVIC Pro also has a consent management platform built in. And that's what we're gonna use today. PIVIC Pro, by the way, also has a tech management platform built in. But if you're like me and you're already using Google Tag Manager, you do not necessarily need to use that in order to use the consent management platform. The core plan by Peak Pro is free up to 500,000 data points or actions. And that means if your site has less than, let's say 100,000, 200,000 page views a month, that you're probably fine just using the PB Pro core plan. So what you also need to know about this solution is that it doesn't have a scan built in. So some other cookie management platforms have this functionality. For instance, CookieBot does this where it scans your site automatically and it detects what trackers, what cookies you're using on your site. It automatically can make a table uh, like with information for your privacy statement and it will warn you if you're using trackers without consent. So that's of course very beneficial, especially if you're a larger organizations and things change rapidly. PV Pro doesn't have this scan built in, so you do need to do some manual work to write out your privacy statement or your cookie statement yourself. Like what trackers are you using? What cookies are you using? You need to do that work manually, but it does have a good cookie banner and it does have a way for people to change their settings on your site and it even has a form that you can put on your site where people can request their data to be deleted. All right, let's talk about how to add PBIC Pro, the cookie banner of PBIC Pro, to our site via Google Tag Manager. And uh, I already have PBIC Pro enabled on my site, so I already have an account. If you don't have an account, just go ahead to the site and open up your account. If you log in, you automatically are redirected to the analytics section of PBIC Pro. But as you can see, PBIC Pro has more to it. So you have the tag manager and you have the content manager. And the content manager is what we'll be using today. And if you want to add the content manager to the site, you need a tracking code. You need to add a piece of code to the site. To get that piece of code, just head over to administration. And then under administration, open up the site that you've added. So I'm gonna add the cookie banner to leonkortweg.nl. So I'm gonna select that here. If it's not in the list, just add it via this button over here. Then we go under installation and then under Google Tag Manager. And this is the piece of code that we need to add. Tracking codes in PB Pro can be a little bit confusing because they have different pieces of code and some of the codes or some of the templates that they are using only enable the analytics section and we want to use all of it. So that's why we'll be using this code and not the regular uh, Google Tag Manager template that you can use in Google Tag Manager. All right, to add PB Pro, the cookie banner to our site, we need to add a new tag. I'm gonna call it 98. And by the way, I have a very particular naming convention in Google Tag Manager. I've created a separate video on this. So if you're interested, go ahead and check the video description to learn more. I'm going to call it PIVIC Pro and I'm going to call it Cookie Banner. So everyone knows what we're doing right here. I'm going to say custom HTML. I'm going to paste in the code that we got from the admin in PIVIC Pro. As a trigger, I'm gonna select content initialization. I don't believe it really matters in this case, but I'm just used to adding this trigger 
to cookie banners because that's what it is made for. I'm gonna hit save and I'm gonna hit preview and we're gonna see if the cookie banner is there already. Yeah, there it is. All right, as you can see, the content management platform does work. I see a cookie banner on my site. It might look a little bit different because I've already been experimenting a little bit with these settings, but the cookie banner is working. There is one little caveat here, and that is if you're using PBIC Pro together with Matomo, you might need to do some extra work. I will put a link in the video description to this article right here, but, um, Pubic Pro and Matomo used to be the same solution. And um, if you're using them together, they might not work together immediately. Uh, so um, check this article if you're using both Pubic Pro and Matomo and make the necessary changes to your setup. All right, let's talk about how to configure this cookie banner. First of all, let's check if you have it enabled. So just go ahead into Pubic Pro, under menu, and then into administration. And then in the list of sites, go ahead and pick the site that you're uh, using the cookie banner on and then go under privacy. Here you have a section called consent and in an option where you can ask visitors for consent. And please check if you have this enabled because if this is disabled, the cookie banner won't show. Also, you might have already accepted or refused cookies. In that case, cookie banner is gone and you won't see it probably for another six months or so. If you want to kind of reset and you want to see like how does my cookie banner look there's a little trick that you can use just go ahead into your site and right click on the page and press inspect please don't freak out you don't need to understand everything that's happening here just go ahead into this top section and look for the application tab and the order is customizable so it might be in a different spot here it might even be under the arrows right here but you need to look for application and then under application there is a, a storage section and in the storage section there is a cookie drop down under cookies select your own domain so in my case leonkorteweg.nl and then in this list you need to look for the ppms underscore privacy cookie if you click that and just press delete you can close the developer tab and press refresh and that way you have kind of reset the preferences all right let's look how we can configure this cookie banner even further. So in Pivot Pro, under menu, let's go into the consent manager. Under consent manager, at this point, we have two options, the consent forms and the privacy policy. The consent form is what determines the look and feel of this cookie banner right here. And here you have the option of choosing a bottom bar, that is what I'm using currently, or a large pop-up. A large pop-up looks like this, but I prefer the bottom bar. I'm going to hit select so you can even edit the look and feel right here and also the text you can change it over here i didn't change anything the only thing that i did change was under reminder you have the option to set a reminder and then say i want a consent form with blocked content and that means that you kind of force people to make a decision so especially if you have paid ads or you live in a country where you can only use for instance, Google Analytics, after consent, you want people to make a decision because that way you get the highest percentage of consent on your site from your users. So that's why I decided to set a reminder and set consent form with blocked content. So there's one last thing that I want to change and that is the categories that people give consent for. Because at this moment, there's only one category and that is analytics. And people can even go in and um, like check or uncheck the different categories but how do i add a second category for instance retargeting and this is where it gets a little bit clumsy because the cookie banner is like very tightly integrated with the tag manager that's built into public pro so in order to get a second category with remarketing here we need to add a fake tag in their public pro tag manager that doesn't do anything but that tag needs to be set to retargeting and the system will know Oh, there is remarketing tag and then it will list that category as well. That is a little bit clumsy, but it's not hard. So let's go into Pivik Pro under menu in Tag Manager and we're going to add this fake tag, custom code. Yeah, that's what I want. I'm going to press next. I'm going to call it remarketing empty. So it doesn't do anything. You need to add a piece of code here. This is HTML for a comment and it doesn't do anything but we need to put something in here otherwise it won't let us save the the tag then this is important under consent type 
I'm gonna make this a remarketing tag. So the system knows that there is remarketing happening. So it can run forever, it can run all day, and we need to choose an existing trigger. I'm gonna fire this on all page views. I'm gonna say, okay, I'm gonna add this. We need to publish this, just like uh, in Google Tag Manager, uh, you need to publish this uh, remarketing list empty tag. And now if I go back in my cookie banner, we will find a second category, or I don't know what happened with analytics, but the remarketing is at least right here. So we might even need a second tag just to be sure. Analytics, we're gonna do the same thing. It's an empty tag. I'm gonna put this under analytics just to make sure that the system knows that we're using analytics as well. I'm gonna choose an existing trigger, fire this on all page views, and then add this to the site. So we have an analytics tag and a remarketing tag. I'm gonna hit publish again, because I want both remarketing and analytics. Yeah, there you go. This way we let the people process know that, hey, we're firing analytics tags and we're firing remarketing tags. So please request consent for those two categories. All right, so we've added the cookie banner to our site, but how can we add consent mode? Well, PB Pro has published this article on how to do this, and we'll be using this article to enable consent mode on our site. In this article, there are two pieces of code that we need to add to PB Pro in order to enable consent mode. We're gonna copy these and we're gonna maybe modify these also a little bit. So um, I'm going into this article. First of all, I'm gonna copy the default command of consent mode. And um, I'm gonna go into Public Pro, under menu, into Tag Manager, because that's where we're gonna enable consent mode. I'm gonna add a tag. I'm gonna add a custom code. I'm gonna press next. And I'm gonna call this consent mode defaults. And this is where you add the default consent mode command. And here you can even change this a little bit. So if you have analytic storage and you want to set that to granted by default, you can do that right here. But I'm gonna just keep it to the defaults right here. I'm gonna say no consent is required. I even want this to run even when there's do not track. So I'm gonna disable that real quick. And then I'm gonna choose an existing trigger. And I'm gonna fire this on all page views because I want this to fire on all page views. And then I'm gonna say add. So these are the defaults. So we also need to add a second script that is the update script. So I'm gonna copy it from here. I'm gonna go into the tag manager again. So in the Public Pro tag manager, I'm gonna add a new tag. I'm gonna say custom code, press next. I'm gonna call this consent mode update. And this is the update command from consent mode. And by default, this piece of code supports four fields. So the analytics field, analytics storage, and the remarketing field sets at personalization, at user data, and at storage. And I believe these are the fields that you like kind of really need if you're using analytics, Google Analytics, Google Ads, and things like that. So I'm gonna keep it like this. There are a couple of things that you could do here. The one thing is like really handy, online 11. So you have the function, and then you have an if statement, and then below that, so under line 11, I'm gonna add data layer push, and then I'm gonna fire a custom data layer event right here. So event consent, mode update and um, i will put a link in the video description to my custom code that you can use or maybe even copy paste just make sure check back with this article if it's still aligned maybe they will update this in the future so check what they have done but this is going to help us like big time in google tag manager if we're going to add tags after consent so so the second thing that you could do right here is to add for instance to set analytics storage to granted, even if people have denied cookies. So in some cases, in the Netherlands, for instance, you can use privacy-friendly uh, web analytics solutions. And then in those cases, you might want analytics storage set to granted, even if people have denied cookies. So this, this way, by adding this piece of code, you can achieve this. I'm gonna comment this out. So in my case, this won't work, but I'm gonna leave it in, in just in case you want to use it. So if you check the link in the video description, this piece of code will be there. And you can, in order for this to work, just remove the double slashes and then it will work. This will make sure that it doesn't. 
So I'm going to add this piece of code. I'm going to make a couple of changes. No consent is required. I'm going to add this even if do not track is enabled. I want this to run forever. I want it to run all day. And we're going to add an existing trigger. We're going to want to fire this on all pages. But we're also going to add another trigger. So I'm going to say add a trigger. And um, this is all documented here. We need to make a data layer event trigger. And then we're going to press next. I'm going to call it this. And it says event name contains. And I'm going to paste in this from the documentation. I'm going to paste it in here. On, we're going to fire this on all events with this name. And uh, we're going to add this as well. I'm going to hit save. And then I'm going to publish these changes. All right, so let's test if our consent mode is working. So I'm going to go back to my site. I'm going to press refresh. And I'm going to go into Tech Assistant and I'm going to see what is uh, happening here. So I see that the four fields that we talked about are all set to denied. And that is um, what we expect because we haven't accepted anything. I'm going to say agree to all and we will see. Uh, yeah, here is our custom uh, data layer event that we uh, made. Consent mode update and um, everything is set to granted. And if I press refresh, so on the second page load, we will also get a consent mode update where the current state is set to granted. So that is what we want, what we expect. Let's also go ahead and test what happens if we deny consent. So I'm going to go back into the developer tab under application. I'm going to remove the PPMS privacy cookie. I'm going to refresh so I get the cookie banner back. I'm going to refuse all cookies and I'm going to see what happens here. So I get another consent mode update, but here it says denied. And if I press refresh again, I get denied again. So we're really honoring the settings. So the last thing we need to do is we need to go into Google Tag Manager and make sure that every tag in our container like really honors the settings that people have chosen on their site. And we can do that via the consent overview. And the consent overview is accessed under tags via this little icon over here. If you don't see this icon, just head over to admin under container settings, because there's a little checkbox over here where you can enable consent overview. If that isn't checked, check it over here, save your settings and refresh the page and then go back into your workspace under text and you will find this uh, icon over here. If you open up the consent overview, this is where you determine what the consent settings of each tag are. First of all, you'll find that Google tags like the GA4 config tag but also the event tag and Google Ads tag all have built-in consent. So those tags we can select first uh, because they are, are already aware of the consent settings of your users. So we check those and then we edit them via this edit consent settings button. And then here we have a couple of options. We could require additional consent and this would make sure that they are not fired if analytic storage is not set, but they are already aware via their built-in consent check. So we're gonna say no additional consent required. I'm gonna hit save. So there are a couple of other tags here as well. Plausible, the cookie banner, and this piece of code. They all don't require consent. So I'm gonna say no additional consent required. Matomo, just check with your legal department. I'm not sure, but in many cases, you wouldn't need consent, but if you would need consent, just say analytic storage required. And um, I don't have a meta ads pixel currently set, but if you would have a meta ads pixel, let's pretend that this tag is a meta ads pixel, go ahead and say require additional consent and then say add storage required, because that will make sure that that tag is blocked until consent has been given and then hit save. So there's one last step that I want to do. Right now, all my tags are firing on initialization all pages, but at initialization all pages, the consent is not yet configured. Consent becomes visible way later during the page view on this consent mode update command. So that is what I want to do. I want to copy this command, this data layer event, consent underscore mode underscore update. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to make a trigger that fires all these tags after consent has been given. So I'm going to go into my GA4 config. I'm going to remove the initialization all pages trigger and I'm going to add a new trigger that says consent mode update. And um, I'm going to open up the trigger configuration 
I'm going to say custom event, constant mode, update, just like this. I'm going to hit save. And this is the trigger that I'm not only going to add to my GA4 config, but I'm going to also add this to Matomo. And if you would have a meta ads pixel, this is the trigger that you would use. So Matomo, let's also use it over here. Constant mode update, save. So let's test real quick what's happening. So if I hit preview, and if I remove my cookie banner cookie, and I refresh the page, let's see what happens. So on initialization, we see that the constant has not been yet been configured. Uh, we see a constant mode update, and here constant is set to denied. So at this point, Matomo, for instance, is blocked. If I say accept all, I get another constant mode update, and here Matomo is fired. If I remove my cookie banner cookie one more time, and I also test the scenario where people refuse cookies, let's see what happens here. So at the beginning of the page, on initialization, we don't have constant mode configured yet. After a while, constant mode, the default is set to denied because constant has not yet been given. If I refuse consent, it's set to denied as well. And uh, as you can see, Matomo is blocked. GA4 will fire, and um, this is maybe a little bit uh, confusing, but GA4 will fire regardless of consent, even if consent has been refused. But in this case, there is very little information track. These are privacy-friendly pings that they collect in order to kind of restore the data that has been lost via modeling. Even though it might be a little bit counterintuitive, GA4 will load even if consent has not been um, granted for analytic storage. All right, that's it for today. I hope this video was clear. I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below. Don't forget to publish your changes in GTM if you're confident that they work. I want to thank you for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.